Welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Well, yes, we'll talk about this in a minute. Pack show for you this week, we've got a couple of reviews for you. So we've got up here, first of all, they're all balancing a bit precariously. Uh, we've got Mirror Models. Um, I haven't looked at one of their kits before, if I'm honest. First time I've seen it. Um, it's uh, Shannon Steele's kits. Uh, one of our local members dropped it up to me to review. Stuffed full box, absolutely. So we've got a review on that. We've got Wingnut Wings, courtesy of Peter as well, beautiful kits, we've done them before. And taking this out of the show as well, we've got um, uh, Andrew um, Stefanoni from Italy, he's done the Wingnut Wings Roland. Absolute stunning build all the way through that one, absolutely love it. So we've got his build as well coming up at the end. And we've got the Man Cave from Colin Hutchins as well. So plenty of to go through on today's show. Well, um, got to cover it. You guys who follow me on Facebook as well, my personal page and the Flory Models page, We've spoken about this one a lot. Um, it doesn't fit, nothing fits, but then it's all part of it. What I think uh, a few guys don't realize is that have mentioned it saying, oh, it's poor, send it back. You can't send it back. It's out of production like 25 years ago. Um, so certainly you can't send it back. But what it is, uh, resin over time sags, and we've covered it before, but it's really sagged on this to the point where um, the upper um, hull, fuselage, whatever you want to call it, uh, is completely pancaked. Um, so what I've been doing is using very heavy weight. I don't know where my heaviest weight ones are, but I've been using, these are solid brass rods. Um, there they are over there. <laughs> these guys here, these big ones, they are great because what you can do is lay it down the length of where you want something to bend, put a former underneath it. I've been leaving it for a couple of days to push them back out and straighten them instead of going through the hot water technique, which as I explained on the actual video builder, this is all very well when you do it a small part, but when you're doing something that's over a foot long, foot wide, trying to keep it all together is really hard because also you get one area is gonna sag quicker than the other. So I don't really wanna go down that route. But using these rods, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic because you can lay them down and because they're flat and it's a flat surface, it sort of conforms it all together. Um, so you can push them down and get on with it. But we have had a few problems to say the least, uh, getting it all to fit, just generally working with something this size as well can be somewhat of a headache, but ooh, oh, we are getting there. So we've got the underside, we've got to do clean up on this because we've welded this up with resin, but it gives you an idea of the level of the detail uh, and exactly what is coming out of this one. And it is starting to take shape now. We've got it to the right angles because obviously getting this, this had warped as well. So we've straightened this one out now. We've got to do a little tiny bit onto the nose. It's just a little bit bent, but we got that one. The problem one was this top half. As you can see, this one's all together now. Um, and these dots is where I mark them out because these are the original points where anything I've sanded off or removed, I've got to put back. So certainly this is what I'm trying to do with this one. But as you can see, we've welded it up and used resin. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do a full standalone thing on using resin because as soon as I started using resin on this, um, everyone was like, oh, what are you using? Where'd you get it from and everything else? Uh, I have had this stuff a while and the stuff I use from when I used to do commission stuff I used to have quite large quantities of it lying around now I don't have a vac chamber and all those things I just do very simple casting jobs so if I was doing multiples or something I might cast up a scratch bit area and go through it but also what I do with it when I'm working with solid resin I tend to weld up with it using resin because I just find it it's a nice strong flow and you've got a certain amount of control with it but certainly from working with it once it's set is so much easier so when you're doing things like down here this is done it's raw on this side this side's been tidied up already but this lower one um, it's really easy because you can cut it originally then you can sand it and then you can easily rescribe over resin yet if you're going to be rescribing over something like super glues uh, and epoxy glues things like that they dry so hard that it's totally different to the actual what you're you've got here that you can end up with a situation of you scribing along and then it just goes rock hard and you scratch it you can jump off so i prefer to do my sort of you know clean up uh, and welding actions using resins and it doesn't shrink like filler 
but as I explain in the video for part two on this one, I wouldn't run out and start using this instead of using your traditional fillers because this uh, is quite a expensive way of doing it for one. Uh, but secondly, it's time consuming because you have to knock it up. You can only do very small quantities. But if you watch uh, part two, and obviously we'll cover it in part three, uh, about on the Star Destroyer, that that will actually go through about knocking up the resins and everything else. But I will do it because I know I'm going to get bombarded as soon as the video goes live on this about using resin. Um, I will go through all the links of where I get it from and everything else, but I'm going to do it as a standalone, probably 30 minute show on casting your own bits, um, certainly working with resin, making up resin, because there's a few little tweaks and techniques I've learned over the years of using resin uh, about with hardener quantities and things like that, of how to get smoother finishes with resin, that you don't need to have expensive equipment to do it when you're doing small limited runs. And obviously we'll talk about copyright rules, about copying people's work and everything else like that. But no, that is the thing, because I just know I'm going to get bombarded, but I will do it. Um, let me get a little bit more ahead on this one and get it together so I've got a bit of bench space. And then when I've got a bit of bench space, I will talk about exactly how we're going to, you know, working with resins, when not to, making it up, getting your best out of it and things like that and going through it all. But no, um, apart from major warpage issues, trying to sort that out this week, um, and just generally trying to think of the best way to put this together obviously doing it justice as well uh, and everything else like that because you could just put this together but it's going to look all over the place it's going to have sink marks i know what would happen is if you put it on the front area would look too flat and it would be so noticeable so that front needed to be pulled up um, or, or pushed into place and everything else so little time consuming things like that took a little bit longer probably put me back about two days just straighten everything out but we are back on it because what you actually see here now is obviously this is completed now the bottom half so what you used to said sort of flew out the old um, cargo bay going down in there so that one can be fitted in welded up around there but what we need to do is little time consuming things like we've got to open this up and put little light holes all the way through because when you look at it you see at the opening of the film it's lit inside we need to recreate that with the leds so with the led strip we're going to be running one continuous area right the way around the back of it then we've got to do an internal loop in there as well. Then it's going to have to come up and work its way through the superstructure layers. So we're going to have to have a layer of LEDs down here, another layer of LEDs behind here and behind this one. And then comes a tricky bit of getting it, the final ones up to the top of the actual uh, the flight deck up there itself, the bridge of the aircraft ship. To know actually, is it a ship? Is it an aircraft? A spaceship? spacecraft not sure okay uh, but anyway you can pop it up there and things like that so it's just working out the ways of doing it and obviously we have got to fit these internals uh, into this so what we're going to have is a bar going to be coming across somewhat like this okay which is going to be set in just like the real one has for the film at this scale okay so what it can then be done is be mounted from the side if this is the right one it is there's no slack in this at all. So then you could mount it and then obviously it can be displayed like this from the side. And then obviously we're gonna do the same for the rear using the rear engine as our point. So we're gonna have a bar coming out the rear and then again, this thing will sit on it. And because this is quite very, very strong in testing, we've load better tested this to see what it is. Because trust me, when this is all loaded up, I hate to think how many kilos of weight this is. But needless to say, we've just got the base unit on now ready and that's actually quite heavy. So once we've got those in, then we're going to put in the strengtheners all the way down. We're going to have two sets. We're going to have one set running down here, one set running down here, okay? And then they will then solder um, completely to the ridge work that comes in. So obviously you can have one to the front to the back, one side to side and those. And hopefully it should, fingers crossed, last a lifetime. Or certainly I hope so, a bit more in my lifetime. It'll still be around and in one bit and everything else. Once those are all together, then we've got that lovely thing of painting this thing. And I know lots of you have asked me about how we're going to paint it and everything else. It's a case of watch and see, but it's going to be very similar to doing a ship on its scale factor. And we're going to obviously be using dry brushes and washes, you know, and uh, various different techniques to really bring this one up. And certainly the biggest thing will be masking. But it has been lots and lots of fun. I know it's caused a, a little bit of a stir because the amount of messages I've had on this one it goes on and on and on. But uh, as I say, going together, I should think by next week we'll have it completely together uh, and then we can have it all sealed up, ready to go through. Just editing may take a little bit longer coming down the line than I can actually build it. So bear with me um, because we've got a nice long part view this week, which is like 40 odd minutes, which gets us just past this point. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about how to use the resin as a filler uh, and everything else which will be on the next part 
and then so forth and so on and we can really start to uh, lump this one together but it's a lot of fun and it's coming together really really nicely and thanks for all the kind comments on it as well okay first up we're going to look at this is the mirror models um 135th scale this is the diamond t wrecker quite a big kit certainly a lot of plastic in there Welcome to Flory Models review time. Something totally different for us. Um, this is uh, a new company to myself, having never seen any of their kits before. But this is M uh, Mirror Models uh, Limited of Ireland. I say totally through me. To be honest, this isn't my kit. It's one of our members' kits. Left it here for a review, and uh, as you say, something a little bit different. So what we got here is a one thirty-fifth scale US Diamond T nine six nine A Wrecker. Okay. Uh, the kit number is 35801. Got some nice little artwork on the back. Obviously, it's a recovery truck. And as you can see, there's the one China picture of the loader, as you can see. Uh, a little bit of information about the actual uh, vehicle itself. Okay, so actually, what we got then? Crammed in a box. And when we say crammed in a box, we really mean this is absolutely solid and bulging. Bearing in mind, we haven't been in here yet either. But as you can see down in here, we've got stuff straight off the top, a little bit crudely bagged, shall we say, but we've got the decals down in here. We've got some photo etch, so we've got some gears and cogs, as you can see down here. We've got a length of chain, which is a nice touch. Actually, it's all falling out. So it looks like we've got a brass chain. Quite a nice touch, just like that. And as I said, we've got length of th thread, and we certainly have, you can probably see it in here, what we've actually got, we'll get rid of the glare. As you can see, we've got the actual fan blades there, for the radiator, some geared teeth, some plating, looks like some belts uh, and harnesses and things like that. And then with the decals, again, as you can probably see, we've got various markings uh, for different vehicles, things like that. A little bit of, uh, I presume that is the actual uh, little lifting gear area decal down there. Let me just poke this back in before I lose it. Okay, so what do we get? First up, let's have a quick look at the instructions. Um, First thing that strikes you is it's sheets of paper of it all going together. So it's a little bit more complicated, I think, than you'll find most of them. I'm just seeing if they're in any semblance of order, even. Uh, doesn't look like they're in any particular order, which is a little bit different. Uh, don't seem to be numbered. Anyway, we'll have a quick flick through. So you say printed um, or sort of photocopied onto paper. So we've got some reference shots down here, which is quite a nice touch, and some drawings of actually how the rope work will be going onto it. As I said, I think this is out of order and how it should look when it's on the actual vehicle itself. Okay, so it's calling out things like down here for using 0.3 millimeter wire, making up the handles, things like that, giving it extra detail. Oh, they are numbered actually with, I think we're starting at the wrong end. Here we go, number one, we'll start at the beginning look. So obviously we've got two part wheels going to be going on here and everything else. So that's those going on. Then it is straight to the engine. So we've got quite a, a detailed engine going down in here, as you can see. <clears throat> and then what we've actually got is the major framework going in. Obviously the gearbox, and it does look very detailed the way it is all going in together. Quite a bit of work going down in here. So as I said, more details going on to the engines, everything else like that. That's a photo etch blade going on there. The radiator, the front axle system going through. Obviously the uh, wishbone suspension system going in. And obviously all those areas down in there as you can see. And there's us building that uh, suspension and everything else. And it does look like quite a complex kit. So if we just skim through so you can see the pictures as we're going along. As you can see, there is a lot of detail going into this kit, which is something, you know, as a, a non-vehicle guy, shall we say, it's quite lovely to see the amount of intricate detail and parts, but also the way that the, the drawings here, these aren't just exploded diagrams showing you where to put parts, it's actually how to fit them on. And lovely little touches down here, like we've got the compressor for the vehicle itself. Uh, for obviously doing its recovery work but it's very nice to see detailed and then we've got inlaid photos showing how bits will go on there and everything else and as you can see it is very very nicely drawn out and done 
I have to say, uh, being the first time I've seen one of these, it uh, really is very nice to see. And here we are back to where we started with showing about putting the rope system on. So looking at the instructions, it looks very, very positive. Okay, what are these, food bags? Um, different, you know, whatever works. If it's separate bags, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, so having a look, this is our first part down here. So we've got the instrument panel, looks like cab area. So we've got checkerboard detail down here on the flooring, as you can probably see, and then working, looking at the parts. The first thing that notes, that sort of stands out and grabs you, we've got very large gates, uh, which is where the actual sprue attaches to the part. They seem to be quite large, uh, especially on small parts, so just be careful how you're removing them. It, it's quite a thick, heavy duty, sort of chunky plastic. But if you look down here, you might be able to see the, the size of these actual gates as they go on there, they are very, very large and everything else. So a little bit down there, whilst we got it out, we've got the clear parts. So if we have a quick look in here. So the windscreen itself does look very, very clear. You can see you've got no real distortion down there. We've got headlights and obviously it'll be tail lights, I presume for that. Very nicely done. Again, very large gates going onto it. It's the one thing that sort of standing out with this We'll just pop that one back okay so in food bag number four uh, again very nice no real signs of flash um, actually on the parts so lots of flash on the mold but the parts do seem to be quite clear but again large gates on small parts it's never going to be easy because you know certainly you might be able to see these guys in here um, that's very big gates going onto a small part. So when you're cutting them off, you're more likely to bend or destroy the actual part itself than getting it off the, uh, the, the said gate. But there again, all the parts seem to be very nice. As you can imagine, because we've seen this, there is lots and lots and lots of parts on. That's a mirror of the other one. And just looking at the mold, it looks like it's distorted, but the parts all do seem to be okay. So we've got multiples of the same here. So what we'll do is we'll just do one of them. So we've got these wheels, again, slightly softly done. Got a burn mark in the mold, but it's all okay. Uh, generally looking pretty good. Not too bad at all. They seem to be all very nice. Okay, that's a mirror. <clears throat> and as I say, now you can see what I mean about being absolutely stuffed, this kit. So it looks like we've got a mould cut here, so the sprue would have carried on, but for obviously getting it in the box, I'm assuming this is a mirror and will probably go on the other side like that, and it does. So that's how that would have gone, but to fit it in, so that's just a duplicate. But again, wishbone suspension, very nice, taken nice, very nicely. These axles and everything else, very nicely done. The detail on these small parts just seems to be very nice. Got no obvious sign of sink marks or mis molds or anything else like that. Just again, on something, these tiny little parts all down here, um, I think it's gonna be a real problem get them off the sprue. And I know I harp about it, but it's a classic example in here. Probably a little bit too tight. But as you can see, these tiny little bits and the gates are so big on them as they go across, just, it'll be one of those things of, um, taking your time getting them off the gates, then cleaning them up afterwards. It's gonna be very, very time consuming on this. This won't be a quick build. Big thick bag here. Obviously run out of food bags at this point. <clears throat> so what have we got? Um, again, we've got the block here for the engine and the various major parts. Again, we've got loads of holes in this sprue, which worries would worry me a lot. Um, because normally if you've got them here, it's where it's not flowing correctly through the mold uh, and things like that. Sometimes it can happen, the parts then get mismolded uh, and you get sort of short runs as we call them, but they all look to be okay on this one. But down this bottom area here, you can probably see it quite clearly, all these dots, technically they shouldn't be there, but they're not harming any parts, so we can live with that. <coughs> Okay, so as I said, engine, various parts here. We've got the steering wheel. You know, again, we're saying getting that off will be a nightmare. Uh, looking through, all seems very nice. Very nice detail. The um, Anything with bolts and stuff like that, they're very nice, they're very crisp. Come to the surface. This will be one of those kits where it will be, I think, a labor of love putting it together. It's gonna be very time consuming with all these small parts going in. Recently just done some naval work. Um, ships are the same thing, going through 
but uh, okay so we've got a little bit of texture we've got a weld seam mark running through these uh, wheel arches which is a lovely little touch okay the grills are open so I don't know how well you can see here but these grills maybe you see it from the inside as well are actually opened so you don't have to open them up which is very nicely molded say the checkerboard is absolutely lovely it's very nice and crisp and sharp how it should be so looking good and last sprue up we have oh, which really fits as it touches We've got the base plate at the back, a little bit of sink marks in there, but I think by the time you've got everything on, you're not gonna worry about it. It does seem to be all very nice. And we've got the tail with the tail lights down in here. These bottles, obviously you've probably got settling and the usual bottles on the back. Uh, all seem to be very nicely done. And the amazing thing is really is, um, we were saying about it's obviously heavily gated. I think one of the things that helps is that this has got no ejector pib marks that are in anywhere dodgy they all seem to be out of the way so by having bigger gates you don't have to worry about the parts being you know obviously destroyed getting them out of the mold um, so that is one of the things if you've got very small gates going onto the parts obviously as it's removed from the mold if they don't come out cleanly um, if they can break and everything else so they put ejector pin marks to push those up to help those parts come out got bigger gates you don't need it so it sort of swings and roundabouts with it I know I'm complaining about them that's just purely because when you're building this you're going to have to do a lot of cleanup to clean up all of these marks coming off one little way you could do it is to use a razor blade um, and then obviously seat it down onto something and then cut them with a razor blade because even I think we're using scissors or cutters to get in there would be so difficult uh, you know obviously even with a craft knife you end up damaging it I tend to find with a straight blade you can just literally push on the top and just push down and take them off and get a nice clean cut and then cleaning up small parts as well you can put them down use a straight blade and just chomp them down to give them a little bit of cleanup so there we go that is the end that's the last one to say you certainly get a lot of plastic in your kit for your money um great detail very nice yes the sprue gates are very large but we can see the reason why it just helps all the parts come out and everything else like that i think it would make an absolute stunning diorama or certainly on a little base plinth and everything else like that of something that's a little bit different with the recovery and obviously you could add it to a diorama with other things going on as well to make something a little bit bigger perhaps recovering a vehicle so forth and so on so well done that's a lovely little kit by uh, mirror models first time i've seen them and i must admit i'm very impressed Okay, so there we go. As I say, quite an interesting kit, very in-depth. It's just the sprue gates, really, really heavy on this one. Um, but as you say, it's a not a mainstream, well-known company and everything else, and it's extremely complex kit. Seems to go together quite well from ones I've seen on the net as well. So something a little bit different, a little bit interesting. Certainly make great dioramas and things like that. Okay, got to mention it, in the forum, uh, we'll cover it now. Can we please tidy up your signatures um, and the banners for the SIGs and group builds and everything else? Because some of them are so far out of date, you've got little blocks on there now saying, well, we've pulled the link, uh, doesn't work anymore. So can you go along? Otherwise, I'm going to let Steve loose and he's going to then go around and tidy up everybody's. And also the depth, you know, we have this thing again, try and keep it just to a few lines. Otherwise, it's that thing that everybody has their stash list on there and you have to scroll for miles. And quite frankly, my poor mouse is wearing out the old scroll wheel. So if we could tidy up those guys, remember, it's very, very easy. Just go into your um, your account, if you like, okay, into your profile settings, down to your signature, okay, and then that way you can just delete it or add to it, or whatever you're down there, and then just click update and it'll take care of it. If not, I'll release Steve. And he'll go around and go delete, 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 and get them all out of the way. But as I said, if you could all do it, it'll save him a massive amount of time and everything else like that. Okay, next up we've got the man cave, um, Colin Hitchens, um, some great work in there. Um, he's got a lovely little setup and everything else. So let's have a look at his man cave. Hi, my name's Colin Hitchens. I live in the south of London in a town called Orkington, and I've been a member of Florian Model since November 2011. Welcome to my man cave. I retired from London Fire Brigade two and a half years ago, but I still pursue my first love, which is organizing flying displays. I had the privilege of running one of the biggest shows in the UK, between 2003 and 2010, and that was the Biggin Hill International Air Fair, which I hope some of you uh, attended and enjoyed. Um, we lost that show in 2010, but uh, I'm pleased to inform you that we're bringing it back this year only in a slightly different guise to commemorate the 50th display season of the Red Arrows. Some of you overseas members have not had the uh, privilege of seeing the Red Arrows. Here's a short clip that we, from a display we did in 2009 at Biggin Hill.
I don't believe we're going to get a touch and go, but my word, we're going to get very, very close to it. That is just awesome. I'm going to be fine. Just feel this go by. that as much as we enjoyed putting that uh, together and it was uh, an awesome sight seeing the nine small red jets uh, surrounding that large uh, 747 which represents all the things British Virgin Atlantic 747. On the modelling side, uh, like most young kids I was uh, uh, an airfix builder um, but never really took it too seriously and then a couple of years ago a friend of mine and an uh, airshow colleague reintroduced me to model making and I've been addicted ever since. Uh, but it was quickly very evident that the dining room table was going to be insufficient if I was going to take this hobby seriously. That moved a long way forward from the days of a few pots of enamel, a tube of glue and an alpha. I think there's more products available now than there are models available when I was uh, first building them. And uh, a new space had to be found quite quickly for me to, uh, to fill the many things that I was about to buy and have purchased ever since. So a clear out of the garage and uh, a trip to the local dump allowed me my first man cave and a great place it was until summer became autumn and autumn became winter and no amount of heating was sufficient to ensure comfort and paints that dried. So on the way back from IPMS Telford in 2012 I decided that as the only driver in the house it was time for the second car to go and the money invested in a new man cave and the one that uh, place it should be was the loft space. My house was originally built with a lock conversion in mind so it was an easy conversion from dumping ground to a basic room with additional storage for the Christmas decorations and those other can't throw away items that uh, we always insist in keeping in boxes in the loft just in case or for those sentimental moments when you want to clear them out and have a look through and put them back again. And so I ended up with this my refuge from soap operas and all things feminine. Sorry, uh, I hope I'm just insulting any female members, but uh, here's a quick guide to my domain. The desks are from Ikea and by luck, not design, they fit the width of the room exactly. Uh, the original plan had been to use uh, kitchen worktops, but these desks offer a greater depth and are at about the same price. Uh, if anyone is inter they're interested, they're from the Gallant range. After a recent kitchen rebuild, um, I found some leftover LED strip lights which uh, became part of my build for my spray booth, which are um, excellent form of lighting. They uh, offer easy to fit and very uh, easy to attach to what is quite a lightweight structure. For my building areas, um, I think I've got a, a lamp which is very familiar to most of you, um, a daylight 14 watt lamp, and then uh, again referring back to the old eyes, a nice big magnifying glass um, offers uh, some great help when you're doing those tiny bits of photo etch. Back on the spray booth, I fully concur with Phil when it comes to spraying. If it's not made up of oxygen, nitrogen and carbon dioxide to protect yourself from it. And having packed up smoking a year ago, it would be pointless sucking in essence of Alclad up in, up in my man cave. Again, following Phil's lead, I purchased the Graphic Air. Uh, 300 using the uh, the discount available for Flory model members um, and as I had room I came up with a new surround which is using flooring protector from the local builder store about eight pounds for a sheet eight before size uh, which is easy to join together with double sided tape um, I also got a second sheet which was of thinner uh, material the same type of product but um, it's uh, great for protecting the desktops not sure if that's showing up too well, but the left hand desk has got the uh, protect floor protecting sheet on top of it, and the right hand hasn't. No real surprises on the uh, on the paint rack, but um, one little thing I did, was pleased with as a purchase whilst searching online for uh, future projects, perhaps to enhance in some way, and come across a fly tying site which had different colour wires of 0.2 millimetre about two pounds a reel, there's uh, around about 50 meters on each reel. I do love a gadget but uh, it didn't take long to fill up the uh, the toolbox 
especially after what my now three trips up to Telford. Um, went uh, with a full wallet and came home with an empty one on each occasion. That's part of the current project I'm working on, which is uh, HMS Warspite. Um, it's my first effort at uh, doing photo etch in any great detail and uh, it's very time consuming. You, you come out of uh, the model room after two or three hours to find you've uh, created something which is uh, still very tiny and not making much difference to the model. But uh, I'm sure as uh, time goes on I will speed up when I'm doing those. I did pick up a good tip off of uh, one member and that was when using super glues um, yeah it's not uh, it's not a bad habit having a beer up here but uh, you can also use the caps very easily to to put your glue in and then just discard them afterwards Florian models certainly influenced my recent purchases I mean HMS Warspite which I'm in the middle of now uh, was influenced by that awesome build of Stefan Carlson and uh, a future build which uh, I'm hoping to follow Build that filled it online, so uh, at least I'm trying to emulate some of his uh, superb work. Um, currently, also just finishing um, Black Cat Links. What's been really great is been able to put some of the many pictures up that we've been presented over the years, uh, banned from downstairs. Um, I mean, this is the uh, Dutch F16 from 2004, um, RF Typhoon. Uh, that was when Scott Lockram was the uh, pilot. Um, as you saw earlier, the uh, Red Arrows and the uh, 747 uh, from the Red Arrows. Team Merlin, hope we see that aircraft back on the display circuit again soon. Another great friend of uh, Biggin Hill over the years, the Belgians, starting in the Battle of Britain with uh, the Belgian uh, Spitfire pilots. but. Uh, as Mickey who flew the uh, F-16 at the last show in 2010 and uh, I don't know why but it's just one of the favourite pictures of mine it's the Fugger Magister again from the Belgian Air Force um, that was in its last ever display season some shelving for a, a collection of DVDs up here um, a few of my early models HMS Illustrious a uh, 25 pounder field gun um, Red Arrows, Ravel Hawk on the top. Um, a model of which won't come out of the box. That was given to me in uh, 1992 by uh, Anna Vitoli Caraccia, who was the display pilot of the uh, SU-27. Absolutely awesome show. Shame we don't see those guys in the UK, but uh, one day. Well, no man can be complete without the ability to uh, play some good music in here, even if it sometimes has to be on the headphones. Um, but also, it's great watching uh, Phil on a Friday on the on the big screen in high definition now, um, giving me all the tips and uh, the tips on what to buy again. I think I posted the other day, is it uh, just me or does everyone watch this on Friday and then hit Amazon, eBay and every other model online shop and await their purchases before the following Friday. I hope you've enjoyed this short trip around my, uh, my space uh, and I look forward to seeing you all man caves in the future. Um, in the meantime, thank you for inspiring me to uh, try and take my modelling to the next level. Uh, and to you all in the future, happy modelling. Goodbye for now. Great job there Colin, lovely setup you got and uh, nice to have a look round and looks like you did some great air shows. Hopefully they'll be back. Bring them back, can't have enough air shows. Okay, next up we've got the Wingnut Wings. This is the Salamson uh, 2A2 Atsu 1. Obviously I think that must be because it's a Japanese version. Wingnut Wings, as I said, um, massive fan, everything else like that. It is a fantastic, stunning kit. Let's have a look. Hello, welcome to Forum Models. I'm Philip Flory the legend that is Wingnut Wings, one of their latest releases. Um, if you've never built um, a World War I plane before, you're terrified of rigging and stuff like that, certainly as I was, um, you might want to follow my uh, build that I did. I did the Sopwith triplane, first time I'd ever built a 132nd scale Wingnut Wings kit um, and it was an absolute joy. Okay, and if you're 
in the mindset where you're thinking, you know, oh, shall I, shan't I? It's a bit like saying going for something like the, the better uh, manufacturer, shall we say, like Tamiya, things like that. Wing that wings, you know it goes together correctly. If it doesn't, it's something you've done wrong and you might want to tweak it, things like that, because these kits are absolutely legendary. So as you can see, we've got some beautiful box art that we come to expect from them. This is the Samsung 2A2, okay? Um, as I said, if you haven't seen one of their kits before, um, they are in a class of their own. They are far, far superior to anything that's out on the market uh, in this sort of genre, certainly. But as you can see, quick, quick round the box, the usual bits and pieces in there. <clears throat> what you will find is, when you pop the lid, a beautifully packaged box. Everything always seems to fit with these. Now, um, to be honest, these kits, very, very similar, how they go together. We know they are gonna be perfect. So you don't have to worry about ejector pins because somehow Wingnut Wings have got that mythical thing about never putting an ejector pin in anywhere which seems to be in the way, or not that I've seen anyway. You're never gonna have flash. Um, the gates are always very small and everything else, but we can certainly look through the packets. So, starting off with, if we, we'll just have a look at the sprues first as we go in. So obviously clear parts, very limited on these because they didn't have many. So we've got little tiny windshields, a little sighting system, things like that. Beautifully done, okay? You'll find everything is totally separate bags, so you get no problem with them scraping or anything else like that. But what you can do is see quite easily through them, that's a nice touch. And again, usual thing, we've got um, markings on the wheels, on the rubber for the manufacturer's marks, things like that, as you make your way around absolutely everywhere ribbing i presume this is the engine mount just down here looks absolutely fantastic you might be able to see the weaponry we've got the guns fitted down here again beautifully done uh, let's make our way through as i said i'll look out for flashing that but i've never seen it yet the engine okay so we've got a radial engine on this which is something a little bit different okay so it's certainly a bigger um, plane than what we've seen before very nice prop so we've got things like the screw holes and everything down in here you can see on the camera on that one absolutely lovely fantastic work and you obviously you've got hoses and the lines and timing things and everything else you can imagine uh that is a duplicate i do believe of that one is it not <clears throat> just check the sprue that's d so we get two d's in the kit okay now some of the more important bits so we've got the fuselage so certainly from what i'm used to this is a far far bigger uh, plain than what we've seen before. So you've got this beautiful textured ribbing on the outside. The texture that the actual plastic has as well represents a fabric type texture uh, as you make your way through. So you'll notice that it does look like stretched over the formers and the ribbing of the actual aircraft itself, which is lovely done. And then you'll get things like this for the top area, obviously for the, uh, the pilot and the gunner at the rear, um, you know, for the tail gunner, just making sure. Um, so you've got that nice mixture between the fabric and the metal having slightly different textures, which is a nice one. Ribbing poking through, complete with little nuts uh, down there as it does in real life on the tail plane. And then down on the inside, you might be able to see we've got the ribbing through here. Injector pins, yes, they are there. Look, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. But if you notice, they're everywhere where it doesn't matter. As I said, very, very finely engineered the way that these actually go together and everything else. And again, you will never get ejector pins on large things like you would imagine, like on wings. Normally, something that big, you'll be pushing them out. You won't find them on wing nut wings. Okay, so into the more intricate parts, as we can see down here. So we've got this, uh, the cooling system down here, some of these bracing systems. I assume that's the cockpit floor down there. So you have got ejector pins in here, but again, they are for the inside, so you won't see. And making a way, we've got control surfaces just down here. Absolutely beautifully done. Um, all these little veins and air scoops and that are all completely open. No sign flash in them whatsoever. Very crisp and clean. And these ones down here, these very small ones, they are absolutely beautifully done. Next brew up, we get into the more intricate parts and the smaller parts. Um, so you've got absolutely lovely the way these are done. No flash at all on any of the parts that I can see. Absolutely done. You've got the texture on some of these parts. It's absolutely phenomenal. Both sides textured beautifully. Okay, and on the tanks, things like that. Absolutely fantastic. Even right down to cushions. The cushions are actually textured as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Actually does look a very, very nice kit, this one. Okay, into the wings. 
as I say, normally something like this, you're gonna have ejector bin marks, but you don't find them. Again, beautifully textured. So you've got like that fabric texture for the fabric, but where it's stretched over the formers, it's a, a sort of, you know, because it would be tighter over those areas, it's not as sort of textured, which is a lovely thing. So it may, just makes weathering and things like that a little bit easier, as I found when I was doing mine. So again, Fantastic on both sides. You've got ejector pin marks just down in here, but as I said, they are totally out of the way. They're going to be buried deep in your fuselage of your model and all the way through. These little holes you can see over here, this is for your bracing of your wire. It doesn't have too much on these ones <coughs> compared to the other one, so you know it's uh, not too much of a problem for those on the control surfaces. The book, again, if you've never seen the wing nut wings, I'm sure you've seen my reviews on them before, but these books aren't just instructions. These are um, construction guides, I'd prefer to call them, because you get a lovely bit of data on the actual model itself that you're actually building, uh, your history, so you've got your measurements, your armament, references, things like that, all down in here. Colour callouts, as you can imagine, so it's Tamiya Humbrol, and then you've got your FS, your Federal Standard stuff, as you're making your way through. Some of the parts you're not gonna use, obviously marked out in blue, but these are absolutely beautifully done. We'll look at the photo etch in a moment and the decals. But as you can see, when you look at these, the level of and quality of the instructions of how it's going in and how it's showing you with nice close-up photos to show you exactly what's going on with these is absolutely fantastic. So as you can imagine, starting off with your cockpit, making your way through, and then these famous ones. So if you want to put your bracing in, one little tip, I am no by any stretch of the imagination an expert on doing World War One aircraft but what I can tell you if you are doing bracing wire on the inside and even control cables make sure they don't interfere with the body because the tolerances on these kits are so fine that if your wire is you know and we are talking you know 0.15 of a millimeter but you think that's like 0.3 millimeters overall it can push the sides out and I know a lot of people have said oh they have trouble fitting fuselages and things like that that's what it is you have your wiring to the outside it can interfere because the tolerances are that small. Little tips you can do around it is make little nicks, slight little indentations into the formers and that will give you the breathing space you need. Again, going through, absolutely fantastic. So we've got some nice photo down here showing the actual aircraft as well with this lovely radial engine at the front with the cooling scoops. And then the all-important engine, very nicely detailed as you can imagine making your way all the way through. Absolutely fantastic. And then obviously the colour callouts as well, extremely accurate. Beautiful photos again showing you what you should be getting. Okay, and this is this uh, cooling scoop which is beautifully replicated within the model. Fantastic injection molding on that one. And then all the way through, as you can imagine, fixing of the guns. And then you're starting with the uh, interesting bit, <clears throat> getting the wings on, and then we'll be into the uh, putting it all together. So, as you can imagine, great shots, lovely references. And that's why I describe these as more of a guide rather than just instructions. It's not just like, you know, some exploded diagram saying stick A to B. These are actually showing you what you're looking for actually on these. So things like the little mirror here pointing it out, sights, speed gauges, things like that, as you can see all the way through. Okay, the gun itself, mounting of the twins. Uh, getting them on the back, using the photo etch parts which we'll look at in a moment which makes up the rings which gives you great detail. This bit here which is the bit that always terrifies me, showing you about the wiring, showing you the thicknesses, so 0.15 for the, the actual rigging wire and then you've got down here uh, 0.1 millimeter for these ones running up to the top and then obviously you'll have control lines and things like that. And then into the markings. So we've got some beautiful markings down here with some great uh, overall uh, photos showing. So there's the, the real aircraft for this one. Absolutely classic photo, beautiful. So down here, we've got the one from 1918 with the uh, four-leaf clover on the tail. Absolutely lovely. And then we've got some others ones down here in different markings. Okay, and then you've got some great ones down here. You've got the, the elephant on the tail and it's nice to see this camo work coming in. And then you've got your general overall reference shots again, <laughs> big G on its end, but as you said, some fantastic reference photos for you. And if you're looking to be very clever, you can get in there and paint things like these on. Again, fantastic reconnaissance aircraft. The Japanese manufacturer of this one, again, some beautiful reference photos again and then obviously about the team who put these fantastic kits together absolutely beautifully done the decals again it's one of those things i know we say about them 
The only thing I haven't noticed is the photo etch part. Oh, there it is. So there we go, there's our photo etch part on the back. As I said, some beautiful work, really helped out. And I won't get this one out again, but as I said, these are Japanese markings and everybody's markings down there. The decals are fantastic. I've used them before, they absolutely fit a dream. It's very hard to knock a Wingnut Wings kit because, you know, they're all a biplane. It's not like it's something different, but if you're in the know and you're a World War One, this is totally different probably from anything I've built of theirs before and everything else. It's a later model of um, aircraft coming off the production lines. But as I said, it's one of those things, it's so hard to, have a problem with them and I was a complete convert if you as I said I'm doing the hard sale here guys because I built mine and went into it with my eyes completely shut you know thinking this is going to be a nightmare I've tried it before they're horrible they don't fit rigging it pulls it apart and everything else by the time I finished it I was a complete convert and also I enjoyed the build all the way through it's not like you got to the bit and you're thinking oh god there's the horrible bit and everything else these kits build up beautifully so you get those internal fuselages right you get them in you can detail them up they're like models on their own okay then you start to put in fuselages and all the other bits and pieces you make way through the way through your build and they turn into something absolutely stunning at the end so there we go another legendary kit from wingnut wings we've yet to see anything we don't like of theirs go and get one Okay, so big engine on that one, makes it somewhat different, but as I said, wing nut wings. If you've never built one, just watch my video build on doing mine. I've never built a biplane um, for a long, long time. And uh, as I say, doing wing nut wings, you always think about rigging. You always think about the complexities and going together. If you've never built a biplane, just build one of those. I know they're not cheap, okay, it's 50 quid a kit, but at the end of the day, you do get precision engineering, just as you'll get with anything that Tamiya could come out with, or any of the leading kit makers, because that is absolutely stunning. Um, and as I say, the great thing with those ones is, the booklet you get, which is not an instruction manual, is basically a build guide, will walk you through any problems that you're ever like to come across. And just remember, if it doesn't go together, it is your fault, because I have problems with mine, and I, it is that thing of, it is your fault, okay? So there we go, a great kit, um, really nice to have a look at go out and get one okay so what do we got prize draw um, remember you've only got what by the time you get this two more days to get your entries in for the March prize draw obviously you get a year's free subscription here at Flooring Models and I can't remember is it Wash or Sand as we're doing this month but anyway it's a full set of one or the other um, usual thing just into the forum it's at the top prize draws just pop your name down in there and um, you'll be entered in the free draw and I use that uh, random number generator thing and I'll pull it out and I'll post it straight up onto the forum on Monday which is the first I do believe and we do it like that so entries in and then next month after that, obviously then we'll start at the next one, so forth and so on. That's really it for this week. I must admit, I know it's a little bit shorter than some of them, but to be honest, because I've been pushing on with this one, it's taken up a little bit of time uh, more than I thought. So what we're gonna hopefully do is get this thing together by the time you see it next week and then uh, we can really sort of push on with it and the fun, exciting thing, especially for me, will be the painting and weathering. So really looking forward to that one. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna leave you with, I'm not sure if you pronounce this, Andrew Stepanoni from Italy, or Andrea, or whichever way it is. So I'm really, really sorry on this one. Anyway, he has done one of the finest builds we've seen here on Forum Models for a while. And I know myself and Steve were having a look at this one, uh, Sutcliffe, in the uh, team chat, we mentioned it as well. So um, here it is. This is his fantastic wing nut wings again, highly enough. This is the Roland D6A. Uh, uh, in 132nd scale. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care.